Hi there, welcome to the Intro to Content Inventory tutorial. Here I'm going to show you how to assemble your own scene from individual parts, as well as how to save your own external files in your content library as Crazy Talk Animator props. This scene you see here was composed entirely of various image and flash files and composed and animated in Crazy Talk Animator. This next scene is a mixture of embedded Crazy Talk Animator props, as well as external video, flash and image files. I'll show you how to compose both of these scenes in this tutorial. First you'll want to start by importing a scene background. This can be found in the scene area in the props section. You simply need to click and drag it in. You can do a little zooming to reposition your camera to fit the background. After that you just need to fill up your scene with various props. Here I'm importing in various props from the living room scene. Everything can easily be resized and rotated to fit your preference. I'll skip ahead here a little bit and add in my character onto the scene now. I can flip him using the flip command from the upper toolbar and then reposition him to lie down on the sofa by holding the mouse outside of his selection area. The mouse will turn into a rotating tool automatically. I can close his eyes and open his mouth by simply going into the sprite editor and selecting the appropriate sprites. Lastly, I'll use the motion key editor to slightly reposition his body so his sleeping posture looks a bit more natural. The next thing I want to do is spice up the scene a little bit with some of my own media. The first thing I'm going to do here is bring in this JPEG image of a baseball cap. Make sure you import your scene elements as props. As you saw before, I can easily rotate, reposition, and resize it. You can make up your own story as to why he's passed out in his underwear with a baseball cap on. Once we've got that repositioned, I'm going to bring in a SWIFT file of a TV frame. I'll move the table a bit to the side, and then reposition the frame a bit as well. I can move it along the Z axis by using the Z depth arrow at the bottom of the selection box. Next, I'll add in an animated flash file of some Zs. Everything can simply be dragged in from your explorer window into the scene. I'll just reposition that as well. Now I've added in a motorcycle video that I can reposition in front of the TV. I'll press play and you can see that my whole scene is complete along with a snoring baseball fan. I've added all these elements as props to my scene, so now if I want to save them into Animator for later use, I simply need to press the Add button below the Content Manager. I'll first go into my Custom tab so I know it's not embedded content, and click the Add button. I'll enter in a name for my hat, and then press Enter. I can do the same with every other element I import, even the video file, as you can see me doing here. Now if I delete the video from the scene, I can easily re-add it by dragging from the Content Manager. I can also customize any prop I'd like within Animator. Here I'm selecting my baseball cap and going into the Prop Editor. I can resize, stretch, and rotate any prop, as well as change the color. So that's what I'm going to do here. Let's change it to something a little different, maybe like a purple and yellow. Now that I've changed the color, I can also add on things as well. I'm going to drag in this little bow prop that I've saved, and reposition that on top of the hat. Once that's done, I can go back into stage mode and save the prop again just like I did with all the other ones. I think I'll call this one Girly Hat. Now if I load up the scene once again, you can see that it's just that easy to import in the new cap as the original one. Now it's time to compose a scene entirely from scratch using my own transparent PNG files that I've saved from Photoshop. You can animate them easily in many different ways like you saw at the beginning of this video once they're part of your scene. I'll bring in my background elements first. Just click and drag them from the explorer window and remember to save them as props so they can be manipulated and everything later. I'm basically just bringing things in and arranging them in layers right now. Everything here can be saved as a prop just like what I showed you in the previous scene. Notice again how the scene manager in the bottom right fills up with every single scene element you add. I'll skip ahead here a little bit and I'm adding some paint splashes to the foreground. If I want to duplicate any scene elements, I can simply hold the control button and click and drag to make another copy. I'll use the simple flip tool to make this one look a bit different, then reposition it up in the opposite corner. 
Now in addition to saving individual props, you can also save an entire scene. What I need to do in this case is select everything I want to be in the scene in the bottom right scene manager. Then right click on the stage. The option will come up to add to stage. I want to select that and voila! Everything on your stage will be added to your scene. Now you can load up that scene anytime you want in the future. The scene will save to the custom tab of your scene section. Now when I restart my project, I can simply double click on that scene in the task manager and the exact same props and layouts will be reloaded. Here we see our little dude from the first scene doing the moonwalk. Nothing really special about that motion as it comes embedded with Crazy Talk Animator. So let's modify it a bit and save it as our own custom action. If you look at the timeline, there are actually three moonwalk motions playing one after the other. I'm going to go into the puppeteering panel here and give our character a unique little moonwalk. If I preview this first motion, you can see that it will override my previous moonwalk motion. But what if I want to combine the two? I can do that by using the masking window and masking out his legs and torso. Now when I preview, he has a kind of funky new moonwalk. I'll go ahead and record that now, but how do I save it? Well, the key lies in the collect clip track. What I want to do is click and drag on that track until my desired area is highlighted. The next thing I want to do is right click on the collect clip track and select export perform. This will essentially export my body motion into the custom perform menu. Once that's saved, I'm going to import in another character and apply the motion to her as well. Let's select this girl and then we'll close up the timeline. If I go into the animation area and enter the custom perform section, I can see my saved animation there. What I'll do now is just apply it to the new character and there you go. She'll do the exact same motion. Pretty easy, right? Another thing you can do is save facial profiles as well as puppeteering profiles. Right now I'm in the motion key editor browsing through different emotion templates. I'm going to make one of my own to give this character a bit of a sadder expression. I'll go over to the modify tab first so I can alter the default expression a bit. What I'll do first is raise the inside of both eyebrows to give a bit of a sadder look to the eyes. I can do the same thing with the cheek slider below. Just move the mouse along the slider bar to change that particular area of the face. Once I've done that, I'll go back into the profile area and adjust the facial positions manually. As you can see, I have the outer eye selected, so clicking and dragging the mouse will allow me to narrow the eyes. I can then deselect the outer eye area, and then select the area between the eyebrows to lower or raise that particular area. I'll raise it a bit to emphasize the expression, then move to the custom tab where I can save my emotion template. To do this, I'll just click the add button at the bottom right, and then enter in a name. Now on to puppeteering profiles. In the advanced section of the facial puppeteering menu, I'm changing the strength of the eye motion on one eye. You can see that the results are maybe not exactly what I'm looking for, so I'll go back in now and adjust the value for the eye to something not as strong. Because I want to be able to use this puppeteering profile to make my character cry, and people don't normally roll their eyes too much when they cry. I've set the eye rotation strength to 10, and now this is the result. I can also select different areas of the face to move along with the mouse as well. If I select the chin here, you can see that he'll open his mouth a bit too much. If I select the mouth, then there seems to be a little too much puckering. I'll select the area surrounding the mouth, and you can see the results look a bit more like he's crying now. So I'm going to go up and save that facial puppeteering profile. Now I'm back to a new project and a normal face. I'm going to load up my puppeteering profile first. You won't see any change right away because I haven't done any puppeteering yet. I want to start with the sad expression I had before, so I'll load that up by going into the motion key editor and loading my saved facial emotion key template. Now to see the results. I can manipulate the face in real time while I'm recording as you see me doing here. Once I'm finished, I'll play back the results so you can see our grown man character crying. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now go out there and build your own inventory.